Welcome to Second Take, the show that takes a look at the issues behind the news. The balance between protecting the primary steel sector and supporting steel-intensive consuming firms is currently under the spotlight. Terence Screamer joins me to discuss the issue. Hi Terence. Hi Chanel. What action has been taken to protect South Africa's primary steel, steel industry? Well, as you're aware, the, globally there's a glut of steel and globally a lot of in, uh, steel companies are in distress. In South Africa, we've already seen one of those companies, the second largest uh, primary steel producer, um, Haarfeld Steel, are going to the wall. Um, and there's processes to try to restart aspects of the company, but the, the, as a full integrated steel company, they, they've closed. Um, the, sec the largest uh, company, ArcelorMittal, has been quite active in campaigning for protection. And uh, they've, been s they've applied for and succeeded in receiving um, a, a, a tariff protection of 10% on uh, 10 different tariff lines, uh, product lines. And they also have applied for, uh, in addition to that, safeguard protection, over, uh, safeguard duties over and above that 10% protection. That 10% is really governed by our World Trade Organization commitments, which is the sort of bound rate. So we had an applied rate of zero percent on uh, protection on steel, mostly due to the antagonistic relationship between the industry and government for many years. And then we've had this, uh, uh, this now lifted during this difficult period to 10 percent across those uh, 10 product lines. And uh, we'll have to wait and see whether ITAC, which is the International Trade Administration Commission of South Africa, agrees to further duties on certain products to protect the primary steel sector. What are the concerns flowing from that protection? Well, the main concern is that um, in, in the process of doing this, uh, the environment has changed, the, the RAND has got weaker, and in some instances steel prices have started to rise. And we've seen four price increases since the start of the year. And that has raised the hackles of many um, uh, steel consuming uh, industries who themselves are facing very, very serious headwinds. Uh, the market is under pressure. As we know, manufacturing production is under pressure. So demand is not really there in the domestic market. Uh, that's very, even with the weak rand, it's the, the demand for a lot of these products internationally is weak. Africa, which was the, seen as the frontier market, has come on its own, under its own pressure with the slump in commodities. So that market is not as vibrant as, as was hoped for. So all around, those steel consuming companies, uh, steel intensive companies, are really facing difficulties. Uh, and they're also facing, as the primary steel sector is, they're facing import competition. And we saw that the steel and engineering, the production uh, in the steel and engineering sector has fallen. And the, the, the market share that domestic companies have in, uh, uh, in the steel and engineering sector has fallen to well below 50 percent from well over 65% in, uh, in a, f a few years ago. So they're forfeiting a lot of uh, market share to imports. So I think there's a feeling that uh, while ArcelorMittal has done well in getting protection, maybe sustaining the industry beyond the cycle, that not as much has been done by government to protect the steel consuming sectors. How much pressure is the downstream sector under and what measures are being considered to ease that strain? Well, that's not 100% clear. One thing, one thing is known is that uh, um, government and ArcelorMittal are in the process of agreeing uh, a, f a regulated price for flat steel. So we're going from a, a situation where ArcelorMittal used to charge import parity prices to a deal where in, in return for protection and also in return ultimately for designation of uh, steel in infrastructure projects, at the moment, if you use steel in an infrastructure project like Madupi or Kusile or the railways, you can import that steel and, de and, and deem it local. They're going to undeem un it so that uh, only local steel can be used uh, in that local content portion. So that's that. in return for that, uh, they're going to forfeit the upside in their price, theoretically, through a regulated steel price. And what government is saying is that they're going to be setting up a steel committee of experts, of government officials, uh, I imagine of some downstream uh, steel, uh, pr uh, steel consuming companies to look at that uh, setting of that price into the future. Now the key thing is that it's going to be based on a basket of so domestic selling prices in other markets, in NAFTA region, in Asia, in Europe, but individual countries are going to be looked at. 
And I think the key thing here, again, will be what is in that basket. Now, if that basket only has high-cost domestic steel, then Arsenal Metals in the pound seats. If it only has low-cost domestic steel locations, then uh, I suppose the steel consuming sectors will be in, in the pound seats, but the, the viability of Arsenal Metal will come under threat at some point. So I think a bal balance has to be struck. I think there's a view out there that a deal has already been struck. That is not the case. A deal hasn't been struck. There hasn't been an agreement on that basket uh, price yet. And, uh, but I think we're getting pretty close to that. And I think that uh, people are going to be looking at that, wanting to have some transparency around that basket because if it's too favourable towards Arsenal it means we're going to have domestic selling prices that are higher than they should be and maybe not too dissimilar to import parity pricing. And that's going to hurt the, the metals and engineering sector uh, because they'll be paying more for their steel behind a protective wall. So it's a, it's a balancing act. It's technical, it's difficult, it's complex. There's a lot of role players in the space and there's a lot of frustration on both sides and it's going to be uh, need the wisdom of Solomon to navigate this one. Thank you. That's the second take show for this week. Thank you for watching and join us again next time for more news analysis.